Hi, I'm Mike with PWR. Today we've just replaced the rack and pinion on this 2011 Chevrolet Tahoe. And this process will be very similar on many other GMC and Chevrolet products. In this video, we will show you step-by-step step how easy it is to install a PWR steer installation ready rack and pinion. Hey, enjoy the video. In this installation, we will start by making sure that we secure the steering wheel. Using a steering wheel holder like this one is the more professional way of securing the wheel. You can also use a tie strap secured to the brake pedal. Or you can use the seat belt. Loop it through the steering wheel and then lock it into place. This is very important to prevent clock spring damage affecting the airbag operation. Also, always make sure you disconnect the battery. Now, raise the vehicle up, making sure it is very secure. Remove the front skid plate if the vehicle has one. Now, remove the front wheels. And then loosen the jam nuts on each outer tie rod. Now loosen the nuts that holds the tie rod to the spindle. Disconnect both outer tie rod ends from the spindle, but do not remove them from the rack and pinion unit. Keeping the tie rods connected is important because we will measure them once the old rack is out of the vehicle. We will then transfer those measurements to the new rack. Because these outer tie rods are the long type that are not threaded to the end, you can use a hammer to hit these to remove them. Using a fork separator may damage the boot. Now it's time to separate the steering shaft from the rack. Remove the 12 mm sector shaft through bolt. You will need to separate this. We used a screwdriver and tapped it upward, sliding it off the shaft. Next, you will remove the 8 mm bolt that clamps the power steering lines to the rack. Have a pan ready to collect the fluids. You'll have to wiggle the lines to remove them. Once removed, some fluid will drain out. Now you are ready to remove the four main rack mounting bolts. The two on the passenger side are 18 millimeter and the two on the driver's side are 15 sixteenths. Once these are removed, the rack will start to drop down. To remove the rack, we will need to slide it to the driver's side. Then drop the passenger side down and remove it out the bottom of the vehicle. Okay, once the rack is removed, compare it to the replacement rack, making sure they are identical. Be sure the inner tie rods are the same length and thread size. The hydraulic connections must match in size and location. And the bushings must be the same size with the same spread. And remember, all PWR rack and pinion units are 100% new, 100% tested, and installation ready. Now these next steps are very important. To start the installation, you need to make sure that the new rack is centered. Using a 9 16th wrench, you need to rotate the input shaft steering sector all the way in one direction. Then count how many turns it takes to turn it all the way in the other direction. This rack took three turns. Now turn back 1.5 turns and the rack is now centered. Next, on the old unit, take a tape measure and measure the distance from the outer tie rods to the steering shaft, center to center. Mark down your measurement. You'll need to do this for both sides. This is a good time to replace each outer tie rod with a new one. In this case, we will be reusing the old tie rod ends. 
Either way, install the tie rod to the correct measurements per side. This will help in getting close on the alignment. Remember, anytime you change a rack, the vehicle will need to be aligned. Now it's time to flush the system. Prevent the vehicle from starting by removing the ignition relay and the fuel pump relay. You will need a small container to catch the old fluid that will come out of the pump. Once the container is in position, disconnect the return hose on the back of the pump and plug that location. Position the return line so the fluids will flow into the container. Make sure the pump is full of fluid, then crank the motor over and make sure that the pump does not run dry. Okay, hold it. Refill the reservoir if needed. Note that cranking the motor with low or no fluid may damage the pump. Repeat this process until clear fluid has come out of the return line. If there is an oil cooler on the vehicle, you will have to do this multiple times to obtain a clean fluid stream. Now reconnect to the return line. We are now ready to put the rack back onto the vehicle. Simply reverse all removal procedures to install the new rack. Remember this when we disconnected the steering sector from the old rack and pinion? It's very important to not turn the steering shaft when mating up to the new rack and pinion. Here's a quick note. Use the recommended torque specifications for installation. Once everything is reconnected, fill the reservoir with the proper OEM recommended fluid. It's always a good idea to check the owner's manual for fluid specification. Now, before starting the engine, turn the wheels lock to lock 10 times. Refill the reservoir as needed. Then, start the engine. Turn the wheels again lock to lock 10 times. If the fluid is still foamy after a short two minute idle period, we recommend you vacuum bleed the system. For more information on vacuum bleeding, check out our other PWR videos. Hi, it's Mike. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's recap the steps it took to install this rack and pinion. Check belts for cracks or oil contamination. Check hoses for leaks or wear and replace them if they are five years old or older. Inspect the power steering system and the suspension system. Flush the system with recommended fluid type. Compare the new product to the old product. Every part should be installed to factory torque specs. Vacuum bleed the system every time a line is open. When ordering a PWR rack and pinion unit, here's a guide for when outer tie rod ends are included. The suffix will always determine what's in the box. Any rack part number with a T suffix determines that the outer tie rods are included. For example, a 42-2706T. And don't forget, if you would like to see the pump installation, it's part of our PWR Steer video series. And remember, PWR Steer products are 100% new, 100% tested, engineered in Memphis, Tennessee. See you on the next one.